In 2005, a short story ran in the Washington Post about a Native American high school student in Maryland who was being denied his high school diploma because he wore a bolo tie to graduation as a way to honor his Cherokee grandparents. According to the school, a bolo tie was not formal wear and the graduation ceremony was an improper place to celebrate one's heritage. Governor Schweitzer, despite being from Montana, took it upon himself to speak up for this young man and shine a bright light of shame on the school for being so culturally and ethnically intolerant. He, uh, he also called the Washington Post and said, quote, in Montana and any place in Indian country, a bolo tie is dressed up. He said the school should be ashamed of themselves. He then called the young man to tell him not to be discouraged and sent him a Montana State bolo tie. All of us in this room know what it's like to feel that people want you to hide who we are. So we can imagine what it was like for the young man to hear the governor of Montana telling him to stand strong and not to apologize to anyone for wanting to honor your Indian culture. This story is just but one small example of what Governor Schweitzer, Schweitzer has meant to Indian people across the country. In his eight years in office, no governor in the country has been more responsive to tribal nations than Governor Schweitzer. As governor, he ensured that Indians were acknowledged, respected, and included in all state operations. It is also worth noting that he left office as the most popular governor in the history of his state. It is not an overstatement to say that Governor Schweitzer has fundamentally changed the attitudes of countless Americans toward this country's first Americans. Governor Schweitzer has created a blueprint for every governor and political leader to learn from and emulate. He has demonstrated through his leadership that building a relationship with Indian country based on respect and partnership rather than conflict and demonization is the best way governors can not only address the many challenges that states are facing, but also send a message that inclusion is a value respected by their state. Many Indian people believe that we must make our decisions based on what is best for our future generations, particularly the seventh generation. Governor Schweitzer, whether you choose to run for higher office, and we hope you do, at some point or not, You've changed the way people think about Native people, and your incredible le legacy will be felt by the seventh generation and beyond. Thank you for what you've done and all that you continue to do for this country and for Indian people everywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, Governor Schweitzer. I come from Montana, <laughs> and Montana is famous for many things, glaciers, mountains, wildlife, people who have lived there for 400 generations and taken care of the water, the land, the animals. People who understood that every generation has a responsibility to take care of not just your parents, <coughs> but your grandparents and your great-grandparents if you're so fortunate people who understood how important it is to take care of not just your children, but your grandchildren, and to protect the land and the water and the wildlife for your great-grandchildren, people you may never meet. This city could learn a lot from the first Montanans. When I was, when I was elected governor, it was the first time a Democrat had been elected in Montana in 20 years, and so I promised the people of Montana things would be a little bit different. I'm not sure that they were expecting all of the things that were different. For example, at my inauguration, I invited drummers to come from each of the nations in Montana. And the drum was much larger than the drum that you see here today. And during that inauguration, I said to the people of Montana that as long as I was governor, my heart would beat to the sound of those drums, and that I wouldn't forget everybody in Montana, the first and the last. I told the people of Montana things would be different. 
the people in the Capitol told me I couldn't bring those drums that day because they said perhaps those drums would break the windows, those beautiful windows that we'd had in that Capitol since 1899. And I said if they did, maybe some of the evil spirits would escape that building. But we did make some changes. For the first time in the history of Montana, I brought every flag from every nation, and it flies in the Capitol. It flies in the Capitol today, and it'll fly in the Capitol forever, for the first time. And I brought more Indian people into our government. I brought more Indian people into the highest levels of government in our commissions and boards, and listen to this, I brought more Indian people into our government than all 22 governors before me combined. In Montana, we passed Indian education for all, so that every child in every classroom from kindergarten to the senior in high school will learn the rich cultural history of the people who have lived in Montana the longest. They'll learn more than just Washington and Lincoln and Jackson. We try not to talk much about Jackson in Montana. <laughs> in fact, the Democratic Party doesn't have Jefferson Jackson dinners. We have Mansfield Metcalf dinners because we don't honor Indian killers in Montana. So, those children, every child, Children with blue eyes, children with German and Swedish names, they will learn about Plenty Coup. They'll learn about Ronan and Kalispell. As long as we are teaching our children early, they will begin to respect the people who have lived in Montana the longest. We, during the next 20 years in Montana, we'll make that walk from Selma to Montgomery one child at a time.